Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kennedy and for today's video we're going to be installing this beautiful body weight V-Part wig. So thank you so much Eunice for partnering with me in today's video. But it's super super easy. Literally no lace required, no glue required, nothing. And then we're also going to be doing my updated makeup routine. So if you want to see how I got this look here, then go ahead and just keep watching. Do me a favor though. Before we get started in this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and then also give this video a like. But let's just go ahead and dive right in. Okay so all I did was just go in and part this top section. And this is just going to be the hair that we use for the leave out. And this is just what it looks like all around so once you have this top section nice and sectioned off now I'm just gonna go in and braid this so that it's out of the way now we're just gonna go in and get this out of the way and for the remainder of the hair I'm just gonna be sleeking it into a low bun and I'm just going in right next to my part and I'm adding edge control and I found that doing this really does help the wig stay on and it really does give the clips something to grasp onto and it just kind of makes it look a little bit more flat when everything is super super sleek so I'm just going around the perimeter and also like right next to my part in space with edge control before I sleep this down and I'm just brushing that all the way through once we have our hair nice and sleek you just want to go in and make sure that like the edges are completely down. Like I said, I recommend going in with a lot of edge control around like the perimeter of the parting space so that the clip and the wig really have something to stick to. Okay, so now finally moving on to the wig portion of the video. So this is just what the wig is looking like and this is a V-part wig. So as you can see, it has four combs at the top and then it also has an adjustable band at the bottom. The center here is where your actual leave out is going to be. So I feel like these wigs are really designed to mimic like sew-ins or like clip-ins. So I love the concept of these. So I'm just going to go in and basically before I clip it down, I just like to put it in the center here just to basically see how it's going to look. Okay, so the wig is on, and before I clip it down, I just like to make sure that I have it where I want it, and I'm just going to do it side by side. So I'm just going to start by taking this side, and I'm taking the clips, and I'm clipping it as close to the part as possible. I'm just going in and clipping this, and I'm not even, like, digging the comb too deep into my hair because I did that the other day, and I had a migraine. So the wig will stay even if you just kind of, like, clip it on top. So I'm just going in and clipping this side by side. And it's literally that easy like excuse me like how easy is this it's so freaking easy it looks so good and one thing i will say though before you move on is make sure that it's comfortable because i experimented with this wig a few days ago and i had the combs like too deep in my scalp and i literally had a migraine so you don't even have to dig the combs that deep in you can literally just like clip them on top and it'll still stay it's like super secure like it's just the fact that like there's four combs and then like the whole back is really tight too so you don't have to worry about this wig going anywhere. Now I'm just going to be showing y'all how I blend my leave out in with the wig. So usually when it comes to blending any type of leave out I always gravitate towards products that have more of a waxy base. So this is a wax stick. You can find these at the beauty supply store and this is just really going to like blend your natural hair in with the like texture of this hair so when it comes to blending in my natural hair with wigs and stuff I feel like it's just always so like hard because my hair like I am natural so my hair will want to curl right up immediately so the first thing I'm doing is just going in with my wax stick and I'm taking this on the actual wig and this is just already going to make it look way more flat and prep us for our leave out and I'm going in with my hot comb and if you are working with the hot comb please be careful because the amount of times that I have burned myself on the forehead is wild so just be very careful so now I'm just going in and I'm just undoing this braid and I'm just going to create a middle part and I'm just going to lay the hair right over this top section okay so I already went in with my heat protector off camera but now I'm just gonna go in and flat iron the top of this so I'm just going back in with my wax stick and I'm just applying this at the top of my hair just to get rid of any type of frizz or anything like that now i'm taking my hot comb and i'm blending my real hair in with the hot comb and i'm just going like all the way down and this is just going to create like a super seamless blend 
I'm telling y'all, the key is the wax stick. Like, if you don't have a wax stick, then it's not going to turn out like this. So, I would definitely recommend getting a wax stick. The wig is on, and it's definitely giving sew-in. I just love the concept of these wigs. So, the last thing I'm just going to do is go in with my edge control and just hit my edges real quick just to give it, like, a little bit more of a clean look. So, I'm just brushing this back, and then I'm just combing out the little tiny baby hairs, and I'm just creating a swoop here. This looks so good. It's just the way that my leave out is blending in with this wig for me. Let me get closer so y'all can see. It just looks so good. And it was super, super quick too. The last thing that I'm gonna do is just take one pump of this frizz serum and I'm just rubbing it in between my hands. And I'm just placing this all around the top and it's just gonna give the hair a sheen and also just kind of further help your natural hair blend in with the wig. So when I want to turn to the side, nothing is sticking out. There's like no separation. Everything is just basically melted into each other. So now we can finally move on to the makeup. Let me just kind of like get this out of the way and we can move on to the makeup. So I clipped my hair back and we can finally get started on this makeup tutorial. It has been so long since I sat down and filmed the makeup tutorial for YouTube, but I'm like, you know what? Let me give them a little bit more because this video is going to be pretty short. As you can see, I just did my hair within like 10 minutes. So I'm like, let me just go ahead and do my makeup too. Hello, so we are back. And as you can see, I just decided to do this brow off camera and I love the way my brows have been turning out. And as you can see, my brows are actually more on the thin side. So this technique will work even if you have thinner brows and it's really quick and really easy. So now I'm just going to show you guys exactly Exactly how I went from this to this so the first thing you want to do is just go in with your brow pencil and I'm just brushing my brow hairs right up and I'm just making sure that everything is going in the same direction and now you just want to go in I like to start in the center I used to start at the front but now I'm starting the center and I'm just going to basically follow the natural shape that's already there and kind of like further exaggerate this and I'm creating the tail now until eventually all this starts to connect now I'm just going to be showing you guys how I feel in the front. So I'm literally just going to be taking my brow pencil and I'm just going to be creating like tiny little lines going upwards. So I'm just going in and creating those tiny little lines towards the front of my brow. And then you just want to switch to the opposite side of the brow pencil and just brush through that. Just to make it look a little bit more natural. And now I'm just going in with a foundation. You can use any foundation but I'm just using one that matches my skin tone. And I'm just going to make the front of the brow look a little bit more narrow and clean. I love to go in and just clean them up using foundation. And now to give my brows more of a lift, I'm just going to be going in with the concealer and placing this right underneath the arch. And this is just going to lift the brow and make it look more defined. Now I'm just going in and just blending that concealer all the way down to my lid. And yeah, this is basically how I've been doing my brows. Of course, I like go back and forth to like tweak one just to make them look like as similar as possible, but they're never going to look exactly the same. Always remember, brows are never going to look identical, but I just like to make them look as close as possible. And now I'm just going in and just kind of like framing this with my foundation. Okay, so... Now we can finally move on to the actual skin. I'm not going to be doing any eyeshadow in this video. It's going to be very minimal. This is just something that's quick and easy and kind of like my everyday makeup. So just starting off with the primer. This is just the Fenty Pro Matte Primer. And I'm just applying this all over my face. Specifically in the areas that I tend to get shiny throughout the day. So I like to place it here and just kind of buff it out. And it looks kind of shiny at first. But as it starts to dry down it does leave like a matte finish. Okay, so once our skin is nice and primed, we can finally move on to the foundation. And for foundation today, I'm going to be using the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. I've literally been using this foundation for like two years now, and I'm still obsessed with it. So with that being said, I'm still using the NARS Soft Matte Foundation. And for today's video, I'm going to be going in with the shade Marquise. So just starting off by applying this all over my skin, and I'm just like kind of evenly distributing it. Just making sure that I cover all the areas. And with this foundation, I never use a lot of it, and that's why I like it too, because like a little goes such a long way. So I'm just taking this all over my face, and I'm just going in and blending that right away. And it's just something about the way this foundation just like melts right into my skin. Like, you'll see after I get done blending, but it's just something about this formula that's just so good. Like, I love it. 
So foundation is done and now we can finally move on to the concealer. And for concealer, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Born This Way Concealer and I'm also going to be going in with the Elf Camo Concealer. And both of these combined is just literally like the most perfect formula ever. So I'm going to be taking this Too Faced Born This Way Concealer first and I'm just applying it directly underneath my eyes. And I'm not applying it in like any particular like shape or like method. I'm just literally using this to brighten my under eye area. And now I'm going in with the e.l.f. concealer and I'm just applying that as well. So I'm just blending that out and I'm also just taking it on top of my lids as well. And the goal is just to brighten this entire area. And as I blend it out, I'm also just taking it upwards and just blending it all the way up. So I'm just doing the same thing on this side. And do you see how even like applying the concealer over the lid, it just kind of like makes the area look a little bit brighter. So don't forget to actually like close the eye and apply the concealer on the lid too. And I'm just taking a little bit more of this Too Faced Born This Way Concealer and I'm going to clean up like around my brow area here. Just because it's just going to make my brows look a little bit more like shaped and narrow. And it's also going to help bring a little bit more brightness to the center of my face. So I'm literally just kind of like drawing a line on top and I'm just going to highlight the center of my forehead at the same time. So I'm just blending this upwards and then I'm dragging this down and this is just going to bring a little bit more brightness to the center of my face. And I'm just going to blend that out. It just also helped me shape my brows a little bit more. Okay, so I'm just blending this downwards and mixing that concealer into the foundation. Okay, so just moving on to bronzer. I'm just using this bronzer by Fenty Beauty and I'm just applying this all across my forehead just to give my forehead a little bit more warmth so that it doesn't look super, super light around the perimeter. And I'm also just taking this on my cheekbones as well. And when I apply this one, I just kind of like to go in circular motions. And this is my favorite brush to apply my bronzer with. This is the Morphe M403 brush. So I'm just taking this and I'm just sweeping it on my cheekbones just to add a little bit more warmth around the perimeter so I don't look too light because if we do not want to look too light that's like my least favorite thing looking at you so I like to keep as much warmth as possible and as you can see like it's subtle but you should be able to see how the perimeter is just like a little bit more warm and I'm just hitting my under eye area one more time before I go in and set it with powder so for my under eye powder I'm going to be going in with my Charlotte Tilbury flawless powder and I'm just going to start to press this underneath my eyes. And all I'm going to say about this powder is if you don't have it, you need to get it because this has become like my absolute favorite powder of all time for setting the under eye. This powder is just so superior to like all of my other powders now. Like this one is the one. Now I'm just going in with like a little bit of Laura Mercier powder just to like lock that in. Just like the smallest amount just to give my under eye a super soft look. And I'm just setting my face with this Fenty powder. And the reason I'm going in with this one is because it has like a little bit more color to it. I feel like a lot of the times with translucent powders, they'll claim to be translucent, but when I put them on my whole face, I feel like I look like kind of ashy. So I prefer to go in with the powder foundation that actually has that, that color to it. Okay, so we are almost done with our base. The last thing that we're gonna do is our blush. And this is the Fenty Kilowatt blush in the color Ruby Riches. This blush is stunning. It just literally adds like the perfect amount of like warmth. I love when my blushes have like those like warm red tones to it. It just looks so pretty with my complexion. So highly recommend. It's just my thing. <laughs> highly recommend. I'm into it. It just looks so good. Okay, so now I'm going to spray my face. So our complexion is finally completed and now we're going to be moving on to eyes and for eyes it's going to be very very minimum. I'm just going to show y'all what I've been creating every single day and my go to has just been like a soft smoky like wing and a half lash. I'm going to show you exactly how I create that. The first thing that you want to do is just go in with the eyeshadow palette. So I'm just taking the brown from this palette on an angle brush and I'm just going to start in the center of my eye. Like I'm going to look forward and I'm going to start in the center here and I'm just going to create and sketch out a soft wing just using this brush. And you just want this part to be really subtle, like you want this wing to look very, very soft and smoked out. So if you feel like it's not showing up dark enough, then that's a good sign because you want to keep it as light as possible. Like it's just supposed to look like very subtle. Okay, so now I'm just going in with my liner and I'm making the slightest, smallest, teeniest line connecting from the center to the outer corner here. And I'm stopping it here in with my eyeliner. And I'm just kind of like blending out that eyeliner with the eyeshadow. 
and eventually it's gonna get a little bit darker but I just like to work in like very small increments when it comes to doing looks like this because the last thing you need is for this to be like too over dramatic and then you have to like wipe off the whole eye so it's way easier to just work in sections so I'm just dragging this all the way up and this is perfect so I'm just gonna stop there and just apply a little bit more mascara and now we're gonna go in and do our half lash all you want to do is take your lash and literally cut it in half so I'm just going in and I just cut it in half and you want to take the inner corner and basically place it on the outer corner of the eye okay so I just put glue on the lash and I'm just taking that inner corner and I'm placing it at a diagonal on the outer corner of my eye And I'm just looking down and I just basically apply the lash at a diagonal and I like to kind of like pinch it together so that it has like an upwards lift and this is literally it like it's so easy and I feel like it just makes my eyes look so much more open and I just really really like the vibe that it like kind of gives my eye shape so I'm just going to go ahead and do my bottom mascara. Okay, so once we have our lashes applied, the last step is just going to be doing our lips. And for lip gloss, I'm just going to be going in with this lip gloss by Fenty. And this is in the color Fenty Glow. But it's just perfect. And I feel like this is one of those glosses that you can honestly, like, throw on without using lip liner. And don't get me wrong, I love my lip liner. But sometimes I just feel like I don't always want to do lip liner. And this is perfect. It looks beautiful without a lip liner. And... It's just like stunning, so I'm gonna go ahead and just apply this shade. Okay, so this completes the makeup look, and I'm just gonna go ahead and fix my hair, and then I'll be back on to show y'all the completed look and tell y'all my final thoughts on this wig. Let me just like fix the hair so you guys can see how versatile it can be. So I could even do like one behind, one over, and it still looks really good. Like I said, my leave out is still blending really, really nicely with everything. So this is like a second option of something that you could do. And you could definitely wear both over. I probably won't be wearing mine with both over just because it looks awkward in the back when it's just like your bare neck. And for the last style, you could do like a cute little clip moment. I did this the other day and it was really, really cute. But I'm just going in with a claw clip and I just clipped the back. But even something like this, I feel like it's so freaking cute. So this brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, then make sure you give it a like. And then also, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And thank you again, Eunice, for partnering with me in today's video. But that's all I have for this one, and I will see you in the next one.